So I'll officially call to order the uh, May 14, 2019 Electric and Cable Committee meeting, or special meeting, I should say. Uh, and on the agenda first, we've got uh, the approval of the minutes from April 9, 2019. And anyone, anyone had a chance to look over that? Is there anything that stands out to you that we need to, to modify or discuss in minutes? I we're okay. So, seeing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from April 9, 2019. So moved. A motion. I hear a second. Second. Okay. And they have been approved. Uh, Not yet. Got to carry out the motion. Uh, motion has been carried out. What? If? All those in favor. All those in favor say aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Uh, okay. And the motion has carried. My apologies. Sorry. Um, electric budget fiscal year 2019 20. So, do we go on in? Or? Yes, sir. Jump right on in. Um, main, I first one, I guess I'll start with the question Was there anything that was outstanding? Any Anything that stuck out to anybody? Um, before I get into my main topic of rates. Um, the only major purchases as far as anything outside of the normal that I wanted to bring up is we're looking into a utility drone. Um, that's something that we've been kicking around the idea for a couple months. The mayor was in favor of it. Um, so that would come out of 532. Uh, so that was something that from what my meeting with the mayor, I think Tracy Hudson uh, bumped up that line item uh, to accommodate that. Um, I'm really focused on uh, inspections for both the electric lines and the cable lines um, on a routine basis and also on an emergency basis. Uh, you know, finding that squirrel chewed fiber in the middle of the cornfield, um, decrease restoration time. Uh, they can be equipped with thermal cameras so we can do routine inspections, make sure there's no hot spots and transformers and things like that. Um, so we're, we're getting some, uh, we had a demonstration this morning, getting some uh, quotes on that. Uh, so that was really the only major purchase in this year's budget, no vehicles, um, no real major upgrade in software um, outside of our conversion projects, uh, which we're going to, um, what we don't get done by June 30th that we'll carry over next year's budget um, is only the, as far as major capital projects. Now you said line item yeah. 532? Yeah, that's that's all. Awesome. Where, where is that at? 50. 5320. 5320. Okay. So yeah, you, said five, you said 532. Yeah. Right, it wouldn't be capitalized. Okay. Uh, and that's that's what you've got changed on there to. Right, you all believe that's 62,000. Yeah, I was at 50,000, so that's been bumped up with okay. uh, by Tracy. Got so 62 is correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, Yes, that the the new number is what you all have is after my meeting with the mayor that he was in favor of it. So what would that number be now? What you have, I had I had it below. I had it at fifty thousand was my, oh, my okay. was my submittal to the mayor, but he wanted to go ahead okay. and include that in the budget. So we don't so have that a change then. Right, I I right. mine we is don't have a change. So that's now at sixty two. So I'm um, uh, just quick question, I guess, as far as that's concerned, is that is that pretty much it, what you'll need just as far as equipment? Or are you going to need additional money for training? Or is there any special licenses that we'll have to possess that will allow us to fly in uh, restricted areas, you know, say near the airport or things like that? Yes, anybody that will pilot will have to get a drone pilot's license, mm -hmm. uh, which will include some training. I know Jerry Roche with the airport board uh, offers training courses uh, we can also get them from who we provide, uh, who provides the drone. So we'll, you know, get compare prices on training and anybody that makes sense. You know, a few people in electric, a few in cable, and then any other utilities that would like to become licensed and trained uh, would have the option to do so. Uh, been working with Greg Ashworth as far as insurance coverage and uh, things like that. So. That primarily covers the, the cost of purchasing it. 
Um, and then we what is the cost? The, I just received the email quotes here 30 minutes ago and, and you know the high end high end including training is about 25,000 that includes the devices cameras training and everything that was one quote uh, that's the high end off version the the lower end version is about five so somewhere in there uh, and I, I haven't looked at these quotes in detail I just received them uh, so that's just from from one provider uh, we will either uh, compare multiple prices for multiple vendors I would think um, so somewhere in that range so just uh, I'm looking at the quote here yeah actually the the high the reason for the higher end price is for a thermal camera that's even more expensive than the drone uh, that's about twice the cost of the drone the drone itself even on the high end is 6700 uh, the thermal camera is about twice that and that's really what we're targeting because you know as far as finding heat spots and things like that that you know back in the day they used to use a little handheld uh, so that's really the only major technical purchase everything else is pretty routine um, as far as supplies and capital costs is finishing out those conversion projects uh, so that was the only major things I had outside of our rate study uh, that be um, 5320 I mean I'm just curious why would you put that under technical supplies and not technical equipment under under 7220 is there a re I mean is there some type of an advantage to do that I think the cost I don't is it I think there's a difference I, I, <coughs> Yeah, I'm not sure specifically. I, just know yeah. I, I think it's the difference between capitalization or not. That's what I was thinking. That's what I, as far as Tracy Edson told me, that's where she put it. Okay. And we can maybe discuss that tonight okay. in the council meeting. But Tracy said put it there? Yes. I'm not going to question it. That's <laughs> I, I didn't want to get that that into what I was thinking. The other one is for, say that loud. <laughs> for lower purchases. Okay. okay. Um, so. Unless there's anything else on any of the line items. I mean, I'll, I'll go first. There's really nothing that stands out in my mind. I mean, everything looks like it's pretty much in line and, and everything I think I've explained to myself because of the uh, because of the construction that's going on, the software purchases and that kind of thing pretty much explains everything that's that would be that would seem like it was out of whack, but that it's explained. So I don't really have anything. Uh, other than what I've already I've answered my own questions, if you guys have any questions on that kind of question. Might as well. So to, to answer your question you initially asked before you went in everything else, uh, when we had our last meeting, you guys explained, explained in very good detail everything that's here. So mm -hmm. I didn't have any questions. And I think that's what you initially asked. Right. Um, so that the last major thing that will, that will actually impact the budget is uh, we've conducted a rate study. Uh, we hired a consultant engineering firm by Nugen, um, dating back to uh, consultant Brown Thornton, who was with RW Beck. Um, and combination of him with Jeff Mills and also Larry Hamilton's work, uh, we have, that's, that's this packet uh, that you all had just distributed at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and so if you wouldn't mind looking at that, um, the good news is that it, it will be a an overall rate reduction uh, because of uh, we've been having an approximate. Uh, if you look at the line item that's in each line, the average power cost adjustment PCA. Um, that's the difference in our base cost and what we're paying month over month to KU. Uh, whatever any additional cost, that's that's where that gets made up on. Um, so our average PCA has been around that. Uh, dot 0209 or 2 2.1 cents uh, so as far as you know what people would see on their bill they're seeing the combination of that into a build energy rate uh, so that we're moving averaging around say for an E1 residential customer around 8.4 cents um, as far as you know bill over bill that will be being lowered uh, for each class um, with those numbers so you see the percent difference in each class 
Uh, the reason those are different is just because based on that study that was conducted to see you know where that class currently stood, how their consumption, uh, but thankfully we had that year's worth of the automated metering data. Smart meter data. Uh, so that they were able to you know actually see when our system peaks were and what class of customer and even customer by customer who's contributing to that overall system peak and who's contributing to our KU bill the most or the least. So where you can kind of see that at least on a certain scale is about four pages deep. There's these um, uh, mm -hmm. bar graphs and, and it's a little, I, the way they presented it was an overall <coughs> encompassing. Um, so I'll say the uh, left column, the second one down, um, the it's broken out between um, costs. So you see there's a distribution cost, that's our cost. Uh, power cost energy is, is from KU's energy rate and then the demand is from KU's demand rate. So, the, so you can see that you know which uh, factors are attributing per customer class. Mm -hmm. uh, so that generated uh, what our new revenue target will uh, is for the year that we did the study was from fiscal year 18's data so July of 17 through June 18's data um, so that's that's where these dollar amounts come from so as far as an overall uh, comparison we are okay to lose 6.22 percent in revenue because our KU bill is going down by that amount um, so that's why in the rates that will change as far as on the budget, um, line 453 electric service, uh, which on, on the revenue side, um, we're, we're going to lower that by a little over a million dollars to 15 million eight hundred thousand. And at the same time, lowering the expense side, line 582, uh, that gets lowered to an even 13 million. So, to break it down and, and something that I can understand, it sounds like that the city's uh, investment in the smart meters have really paid off. That paid off, that gave us the data um, to use in the study. Um, I think you know, the consultants that were the first one to actually be able to have that data. Uh, but at the same time, that's also some of the reason for uh, some of those customer charge increases. Uh, so, uh, you know, as far as on a, overall the rate class, there is, you know, a, a, say for E1, a 2.33% reduction across the class, but uh, we are raising our customer charge for the first time in 10 years uh, to recoup some of that expense from the metering change outs. Um, so, you know, say if a customer just has a meter and they consume zero energy, month over month their bill will go up by $2.72. Anything that they, any amount of usage that they use over that will start, you know, get them close to zero and then some customers will see actually a rate of monthly decrease. decrease. So that broken out per class you know as an average so um, you know a lot of those uh, e1s e2s you know be, some people may see a slight increase just from that customer charge uh, if they're very low consumption you know garage service or uh, majority of things like that so but as far as our overall classes you know it's a percent decrease for each and overall to rate revenue so i gave this packet um, I don't expect us to go through the whole packet. It's just kind of what months worth of spreadsheet data um, that, you know, so this is the summary and their spreadsheet to support it and those uh, bar graphs and some detailed data that is very difficult to see on a piece of paper. But if you all want, you know, spreadsheets to go through it. Uh, I that in class. <laughs> you all know? No. So this is the full packet that I wanted to include just to show you know where where some of the data is coming from. Uh, which um, so you know towards the back you will see these uh, orange and blue graphs, and that kind of shows you know the number of customers, um, the uh, amount that we'll see either a percent increase or a percent percent decrease. 
and the percentage that they'll see. Um, so that's broken down per class uh, to kind of see, you know, who. So luckily, I mean, you know, the majority is on the de on the decrease side, you know. So the um, anybody that uses above a normal amount, we'll, we'll see a decrease as far as their monthly bill. Okay. So that's the good news. The other good news that the mayor wants me to share tonight is uh, we had a meeting with KU and that determined not only our new rates, but they also uh, uh, are going to give us a $646,000 refund on our next bill from them. Uh, that is because we have overpaid that amount over the past year. So they, they give an estimated rate, we pay on that rate, and then they do a true up. The last year, the true up was to uh, are negative so we've been paying about twenty thousand dollars or so a month back like an estimated year. tax That's right so so but now we've overpaid so they're going to true that up to us and that will be a credit on our on the city's next bill okay. which will be a negative pc on the next customer bill um, so you know people won't see it really as a credit they'll see a, instead of it being that positive you know around two cents PCA ought to be a negative PCA. So does this get you back to zero after the true up and they start over again or does it affect next budget cycle? And this will get us to zero and then the next budget cycle will be the new rates and the the PCA will go from around two cents to zero mm -hmm. and then it'll be you know back to where it's be a little negative, a little positive each month uh, as opposed to just a continually hovering around two cents. Right, and when we get that, six hundred and forty two thousand? Six forty six, yes. Six forty six. And Tracy gets that check. It'll be a credit on our K bill. Oh, it'll be a credit. Okay. That's right. So typically our bills are on a million dollars, you know, so it'll be a a credit. Um, and then that as it works through the formula then the next customer bill is, you know, what that K U bill is what generates that PCA. Um, and it'll be a, a negative PCA because okay. of that low number. Keeping the account instead. absolutely yeah. like that. So, so that's the rate packet. Y'all can look through that, uh, and if you have any questions, this is kind of the, the you know initial summary. We have to have a public hearing uh, that's advertised. They'll probably do here at the end of the month or early next month before we go into the ordinance phase. But uh, that's wanted to present that, and that's the two lines that change, and that's all I had as far as budget wise. Great job, good deal to connect with the, um, unless you'll have any more questions as far as that, but the time constraints, we probably should move on to the uh, cable net budget, fiscal year 19 and 20. Okay, so, um, there's one item that probably does uh, stand out. Uh, we have a 10 year old bucket truck that we're trying to, Page one. We can probably keep that truck, um, still use it for a little bit while we're doing a lot of the construction. Um, but uh, we, we last last year, well, two years ago, the truck they purchased was around that price. So. Um, that's that's the line item you will see on the uh, detailed company sheet. Mm -hmm. Seventy one eighty is the line item. Number six. And then uh, we also are going to add uh, a, sp a splice tra uh, trailer. Only have one. The moment so that's tied up on one side of town we don't have a, another one you know if we have an issue or an outage or anything like that so as we get into more fiber centric uh, deployment uh, this will help us do some construction and have a spare or, or we'll have two splices going on at the same time and that's uh, also on that uh, line item 
The other item, we, 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 we increased the trend on the internet by about 8% or so, which is kind of what was the, that's kind of the, on the, on the revenue side, which is about our normal growth is about that. Um, we also uh, decreased some of the revenue from cable TV, which is following the, the trend from last year. Um, that's the other item that we've uh, reduced is some of our uh, cost and bandwidth, and that is on um, plan out of 6340. Um, that is, uh, we were able to negotiate with some of the connection with AT&T um, when we renewed, and that's probably going to save us about $300,000 over the life of that contract. So uh, that's the, we're going to try to pass that to the customer by giving them a speed increase that we usually do every two years. Um, so we'll probably put that together um, in an ordinance, update them, or present it to you as a proposal for July 1st. Um, those are the main items. Uh, there's um, storage. We've added a, uh, a little small storage building. <coughs> uh, we have a lot of parts and pieces coming in as we try to uh, rebuild fiber, uh, rebuild ourselves with fiber. So most of the stuff is PVC and we be stored outside. We're, we're running out of space in the garage, uh, so we got to get the um, we got to get the, the trucks and, and the bucket trucks inside. So uh, we look we propose uh, covered storage on the new lot that was purchased uh, last year. That's on uh, <coughs> seven zero six zero. We have also proposed 50000 for the remodeling of the, uh, the current uh, space that's <coughs> occupied by the fire department once they are area, once, once their new uh, area is renovated and, and they move out, we'll have, uh, some, we'll have some funds to start remodeling the, uh, what would be the with the current fire department to uh, head in space. So, uh, I located some funds for that. And that's in which line item that you've allocated that? Uh, that is on 7060. That's 50,000. Oh, in buildings. Yeah. I've got 60. Oh, that's I've got 60. 60 yeah, 7060, 760. Well, we have 60,000. Oh. Seven zero six zero buildings, sixty thousand. And oh, I see what I see what happened. Tracy moved that. I think I believe she to moved the line that. Below. Yeah. Improvements other than buildings, right? Yeah, fifty thousand. Yeah, so that's what she moved that there. No, that so yeah. those amounts are okay. Sixty yeah. and thirty. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Yes, yes. yes. So the head end changes are going to be under seventy one hundred. Correct. And that's going to cover your cost because that's going to be a significant change. I mean, that's a that's a big step when we get the fire department moved out and you're in, increasing right. the capacity and making those changes to the head end. Right. Is that that would get us started. Adequate planning um, just kind of get you started. That would get us started. Uh, the, we don't they expect the project from 245 to be done January February. So by the time they get moved out, it's probably going to be. March, maybe about this time before we can actually do anything. So that would just get next started. budget cycle yeah. then. So, so this will be, get you started. Yeah. Okay, that's correct. Uh, how many bays are you guys going to occupy? Uh, the fire department is going to keep two, and we're going to keep the rest. All right. So are they going to keep the one as you're facing the doors? Are they going to keep the ones on the left or the ones on the right? They're keeping the left. Of Closer to the Three. big lawn. Yeah, I don't think they'd have to keep the one that's been modified for the bigger truck, right? 
Well, initially that was the we kind of tossed that around, but we also need to store the bucket trucks, and so I've kind of bigger bay. Yeah, we need the bigger bays, and so I uh, talked to the chief, and he says he's all right with that. Um, so I guess the other truck can go out to the other place. This particular one. Right. right. Yeah, you kind of locked yourself in to storing it out there. But mm -hmm. If the chief feels like that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I think they though their current trucks um, are parked like that right now anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, this is kind of their secondary station. So, so you're going to also get that other space that they have there, where they have the classrooms and. That's mm -hmm. correct. Now, so how, how much, how much of that space would they be able to keep for fire station? So they keep the kitchen. Okay. And the sleeping quarters. Okay. Uh, they'll probably have the the little the laundry room that kind of okay. area. Okay. Um, what about that lounge area they have? They'll be they'll, they'll have the lounge area. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I think Greg has an idea. Is basically if you dr kind of draw a line from that hallway. Oh, yes. And to the left of that would be head in space, okay. table space, and the right would be. So that's the plan. But those are the main items. Uh, the rest is just uh, following trend. Um, affiliate fees, we'll, we're expecting those to go down, uh, to continue to go down. Um, we have some areas, new areas planned. Um, and some of those areas are in the county as well as rebuilding ourselves and you know, fixing um, some of the coax. Uh, we'll have two additional pilot areas that we plan to convert after spring here. Um, so we haven't exactly picked those out, uh, but we plan to um, at least do a couple more ourselves, kind of know what we want, establish that. Um, and, uh, uh, we budgeted IPTV again in here. We feel like we're ready to bid the items. I'm sure I'll give you some of the uh, items that we already decided on or we think is going to be a good fit. Um, I think it has a lot to offer. <coughs> It'll be a new. Um, interactive, more um, GUI-based um, solution. I think a lot of customers are going to like. Uh, some, of the, some of the parts and pieces we probably purchased in this budget um, that we have some remaining funds. The remaining, by the time we get all this launched and put together, it's probably going to be, uh, I'm suspecting, December or maybe a little before, before that. Um, has some uh, items. The first item there is actually the software and the, and the package itself. There's some encoders that go along with that that work all together. And below are some of the, the monthly recurring costs that we would be charging to the customer to, um, to uh, recoup. So some of those functionalities are catch-up TV, which is what everybody's excited about. Uh, start over. If you right in the middle of a show, you can rewind and start it again. Um, uh, cloud DVR. Um, basically, you, you record your item, you watch it, you know, on any device. Uh, that's pretty popular. The other item is the bring on your own device. Uh, that I think people that don't like to have their own, they have set top box or want to use Fire Stick or Roku or whatever device, mm -hmm. Apple TV, uh, that's kind of the trend. I think that improves our product. Um, we would still retain our FOD library, free ROD, um, and catch up and restart. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be pretty popular, I think. And then pretty much like DirecTV and all those things already That's right. Like pause and that's right. one feature all that good stuff. That's right. That's we hope, we hope this works even better than Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This is it's a good feature, though. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it brings our um, our features to what people are used to already. 
So you wouldn't need a DVR? You, you, this would be in the cloud. This would be your recordings on, on this device would be in the cloud. As long as you have connectivity, you'll be able to watch your recorded items. So it has some, it relies heavily on internet connection, uh, which we're there already providing internet service for most of the customers anyway. Are you going to do a hybrid box? There is an option for a hybrid, hybrid box, which basically uh, allows us to continue you know, for customers that just want us to take care of everything we want to continue to do what we've, what we've done they're not into you know bring your own device kind of things those will have boxes for them so that okay. Okay. Yeah. will um, will this affect the people that you know purchase DVRs or are you going to be able to record and save it in the cloud or do you still have to have a DVR? Or? Uh, so in, in this cloud version, you, all your reports will be stored in the cloud. It's not, there's no recording locally. Um, same thing with catch up and restart. So what it does is basically uh, as a mass storage, um, and as, as all the programs flow, it's always recording. And then it kind of points and, and your recording, basically it puts a reference to what you wanted to watch <coughs> and saves that so you can have access to that. So is it going to make our, I guess that when I, the question I need to ask is, will DVR boxes be obsolete? Um, eventually, eventually if, if, if people, um, it, that's the trend. Uh, a lot of, there's, there's benefits to having it in the cloud where you can access it from any device. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this features featured uh, boxes initially, we should probably just offer them in the already converted areas, you know, converting uh, fiber areas. Uh, but eventually, yes, this, is, this will be available to to everyone that's, uh, that has the uh, uh, any services. So, so providing services on a cable modem is possible, uh, but we probably should start with where we know we have enough bandwidth um, uh, and we're, we're not kind of risking any kind of congestion okay. on that. Okay. And you're saying we only maybe 350 per customer? That's correct. Increase? That's correct. <coughs> but this isn't necessarily an a la carte option that they can add uh, in addition to. Uh, in other words, they can't stay with the current service and use their own DVRs as Councilman Williams is asking. This is going to be a system-wide this will be actually how the system will operate, right? It's that's, not going to be like an a la carte thing that you can add. That's that's correct. So if, if you're on the old system, you continue to use that. Um, and the, this you would use this in the newer areas. Um, there's others that that are you doing this kind of service over a cable modem. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, my concern is we'll create congestion of okay. having the video across that. So this will be a good idea for all the areas that we convert to uh, an IP platform. Is this a millennial type? Uh, he, he, he can say that, but uh, a, lot, a lot of... A lot I am going to say that. Are you included? <laughs> I think I'm included in that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there nodding my head like, yeah, that's the only reason why we've actually done direct TV is because of that feature, Moai Plus DDR. And now with the cloud-based system like that too, you can watch it anywhere. And I think that's a huge attraction for the younger crowd. I think it's Cats Williams. Yes. We, we hear that a lot from people that move from Louisville or different areas. Mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, they feel a little bit dated mm -hmm. uh, with what we have. So. You're still in the young grad, though. I'm sure. Thank you. I no, appreciate that. that. <laughs> That's all I got in the budget. <coughs> uh, the only question that I would have, I guess, is just the trend that we talked about the trend as far as the uh, cable TV services on the downward. Trend uh, and it shows uh, here clearly. Uh, for, for what reason then would we be increasing the modem lease fees in the budget? I mean, is that that seems to me that's that's inversely that would be inversely proportional? Is it? Am I, am I just looking at that wrong? The modem lease that's the cable modems. Mm -hmm. the cable modem that's usually normal growth. I think you're you're thinking maybe set top box. Is that what you're? Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Cable equipment. Um, so that that would be for the internet. That would count in for internet use also, not just for 
Yeah, that's what I was. That's the way I was considering it was cable top boxes, so that that would show the growth in the internet end of it. Yeah, and that's and that's the the, the, the trend from uh, mm -hmm. the ones we have, the you know, customers that we have okay. do want more features. Okay. Uh, subscribe to the top box or one or two, and they have some yeah, supporting that's across it. That's you're exactly right. That's what I was going to use. The tools. We've got what? About 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, so, all right, moving right along. Great job. Um, all right, so it looks like we're on electric projects update. You want to swing over to this side of the table? Or not? Yeah, so, there it is. Just went out and got old screw of water. <laughs> I, old school. I yeah, had the old time to update the digital version, so I did the, I did the old school version. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Everything that's in <laughs> highlight has been done. That's pretty good coverage. And uh, so this is planned for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got another area now, here. Now, what's, so what's these planned for tomorrow? Uh, down Edgewood. Okay. Right, uh, we've got a few transformers to change out. We're doing in house while they got to take the change the pole out on the feed. It they so, were working here. A yeah, they're going to be. Yeah, they've been there. So they're going to work on this, and then uh, the while they're doing this, we're going <laughs> to take care of all this in-house type stuff. So uh, we finished the Civic Center this week, and we've got the Kobeck building for next week. Everything is really moving right along well. Hey. Uh, so the substation is out of service. It's been out for two weeks now. Uh, everything's on cool substation. Been uh, like with weather. Weather's been nice and cool. Weather's been nice and cool. And uh, so we've gone in and we've got uh, everything stripped out and they poured new foundations. So KU's going to be coming in and doing their part. We've They're got on schedule for the most part. Everything we're going to finish on time. That part of it, yes. <coughs> Yes. So um, they threw a little kink in it that the, their substation that they're building for themselves is not going to be ready till what December. November, December now. So that really throws everything off, and so we're going to have to think about doing conversions prior to that because we can't go back in the winter time and shut everybody off and do a change in the, the weather and getting in so we're going to have to convert everything on our own that'll put barton substation out of service again probably from september till whenever they come back on then once they heat that up then it's just a few switches that we got to do the that mean you'll load. be on the pool or the pool substation so back it, like it is now. Yes. Right now it's through three to one conversion here and three to one conversions here mm -hmm. to put it back at four. Whereas then we'll take it to twelve and then everything will be at twelve. That way when our feed from KU goes to twelve and are you concerned at all about about weather? We're always a concern. Uh, weather, I mean, we just got such a big area. So you got everything that's on breaker two now, and then we added three more breakers to it. So it's a big territory that we got to try to troubleshoot so the breaker go out. And so we got to find these different things. So um, some of the meters will help us prior to maybe and have their last little gasp, but uh, we're going to stick out some other old school devices type thing. They're not real smart, but they're smart enough to help us mm -hmm. out. So we got to plan where we need to get those. The increased load on the pool substation in August is not going to be that much of a concern. It is concern. We kind of figure that it's going to get up there, but uh, we feel like there's plenty of room breaker-wise, and then it's just all the connections in the field. That's more of my worry. Than the yes. breaker. I don't think we'll ever see the 480 amps on the breaker, mm -hmm. but some of the wire is old and connections are old and they will heat up and fail. So um, we'll probably, we've got a infrared camera, it's just hand, so you can just kind of drive along at night and 
shows hot spots. So. Is there a girl that can handle it? That has been part of it, but uh, we can still do some of this. <coughs> Won't get it all because we can't drive all of them, but for the most part we can. So we can check our substations, the main connections, any switches, make sure they're not overheating. So, but that's all going well. It's right on schedule. Uh, we've got a couple areas to tackle, but it's going well. Hamilton's just knocking it out. Great thing about this is that we've done this hourly. We have actually gotten more work done because they've gotten out there and they're working on this pole. And we said, just do this and let's rot it underground. So it's when they go to move some wire, the whole pole starts. And so we've had several other poles changed out, didn't cause a, a, a change in the contract any. So it's just, it's really been great with having this hourly. So the other way is with a just. Right, with a tax so, on. Oh yeah, they so, would. So in some respects, that's pretty fortunate for us <clears throat> because that pole's gonna fall later on. Yes, it's, this has been really the best it's been on all the contracts that we've had it's a little more work on our part sometimes but it actually it's improving because we don't have those change orders where they really get you on a change order and uh, mm -hmm. we haven't had to do that we just get it fixed we yep go ahead and do that that's fine so it doesn't cost us any more a little more time maybe but they're right there doing a certain work and they might as well go ahead and do all the work and so where are we budget wise that's I mean, that's it's comparing to the the unit base bids way under that's that's on track with our budget. I think we budgeted three hundred thousand dollars for the whole project, and that was you know so we might and that's so that'll probably be that's about, about a month and a week about five weeks worth, mm -hmm. uh, and then for the one seventeen that'll probably be another month two months. The biggest chunk of that will be this rebuilding this Hendrix line. Uh, so that's just all been, you know, pieces, parts, pole, but reconductoring this will be uh, pretty expensive. Uh, but as far as, you know, the overall budget is going to come way under some of those unit base. We got the library bids. done last Monday. The, so our crews changed the transformer at the, the library while they did the work on the pole. In those contracts, they were charging $7,000 to change that transformer. Right? We had it done in two hours. Mm -hmm. These every one of these were seven thousand dollars, and we'll have them done a lot quicker. So, a lot cheaper. Is there anything that we can do? And I'm sure I've already answered my own question. <coughs> okay, but is there anything we can do uh, as far as KU is concerned? I mean, let's just—they're saying that it's going to be December. What if it's March? What if it's April? Is there anything that we can do to hold them to the fire, to the to the fire to get that situation? Yeah. It's already been postponed three times now by a mm -hmm. and a half. Mm -hmm. So and we've got we've got enough parts and change out parts and things like that to I know that you would. Worst mm -hmm. case would be, you know, polar vortex in mm -hmm. end of November, early December. But we have you know, I, I pulled up, you know, on cool weather we're sitting here for over hundred amps on the breaker too that has all of this you know, so we can lower that monitoring threshold and then worst case you know we do some more field switching okay. to try to offload some of the you know they could, there were more in that much danger of, of a major the outage. model says it'll hold i mean you know we, we've been monitoring it and it has gone over 200 amps on a 480 amp breaker so as it gets hotter we'll be able to monitor that but so far it's closer to air conditioning season yeah, yeah. so we'll see something saturday So then uh, that's kind of that. Any other questions on that part? And then so the Bethlehem Complex and Morton Avenue, uh, we've had electric out there the Bethlehem for the last two weeks. Wait, no, no. no transformer. We got the transformer set today. They finally got the pad and we set it today. They, so now they got to pull the wire and then we got to do some other stuff. <coughs> and then all the street lights are up <coughs> in uh, that area. So Take a look at that. They're all LEDs. They're all oh, right. working. Working. Tall. Yeah, some, some of that, there's four tall lights down. I think it's going to be called Bethlehem Way. Looks real nice. And then we're doing the same thing on Lincoln. We're supposed to meet with the Munnins this week about uh, making our tie and completing that since the new uh, 
facilities come in and down there at Templeton and Lincoln uh, assisted living. Mm -hmm. Looks like a pretty good sized complex and so we're gonna have to get elected. It's around there, but we need to make the tie. It's uh, about 1,400 foot. So they are to pay extra on that. So we signed a contract with them back when all this started. So for the extra capacity, they are gonna pay. So they were required to open the ditch and enclose the ditch and then the rest is on the city all the conduits and wire and everything else. But because they didn't have a plan or a future, they just waiting, <coughs> we said, well, we got to get in because we don't know what you're going to do. So if you get the big box store, we, if we use this, we're not going to be able to do it. So they agreed to pay $10 a foot. So when that comes in and we get a bill, we'll build them back. So we'll get about $14,000 back. Do we want to uh, quickly run through some Dates on sure. the sure. on the table. So yeah. on it. Right. Um, so the thumb run is pretty much done. Fiber's gone. <coughs> spliced. We got to tag this week and next week. Uh, then we move on to Harden Leslie and Tool Creek, and there basically the fiber's up, the strain's up, uh, we splicing. Uh, same thing with uh, Shady Lane. Any new thing? Uh, what do you think about completion? Uh, estimated completion on. On hard unless they feel free. Uh, it should be um, by June. Where's the name by June? Shady Lane, Keep Mountain might take a little longer. Um, but uh, we're on track. August, September? Yeah. Uh, we're also been, we're currently also putting the power on uh, 48. Um, so our current, I want to show you a quick map here. Our current fiber is sitting here on this side, um, this side, and the high road through goes through through actually Spencer County. So we actually could cross Spencer County to get to some of the Nelson County. So we actually got some uh, franchises to serve some of these areas along the way, and that's what they're actually doing now. right now. That's probably uh, be ready. Um, we're thinking maybe uh, September, October. Um, that's basically what um, they're working on right now. The rest of the, the splicers kind of follow behind and, and the installers, the actual mainline installers kind of work ahead. That's about all the, that's about all the projects we've done. Excellent. Uh, I think we covered that earlier. We did cover that earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next meeting date, July 9th, 2019. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Time. <coughs> Time. Uh, so that will be a five o'clock meeting before the seven o'clock before the seven council meeting. Council meeting. All right. Okay. Good deal. Great job, everybody. And uh, I will uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. So do. Second. second. In favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? One's opposed, we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>